Mittagsstunde hier heute auf der Bestmesse in Wien. Willkommen hier bei uns im Vortagssaal 3. Bestmesse Wien, das bedeutet, unter einem riesigen Hallendach finden Sie alle Schwerpunkte zu den Themen Berufsstudium und Weiterbildung. Und natürlich kann man nicht nur in Österreich studieren, sondern wir hier dürfen Ihnen jetzt präsentieren, dass sich auch ein Studium in Großbritannien lohnt. Und wie das Ganze funktioniert, dazu haben wir heute Gäste geladen. Und zwar vom, einerseits vom British Council Austria, aber wir haben auch zwei äh, Universitäten aus Großbritannien, die sich gerne vorstellen werden. Und beginnen wird äh, Virag Varga vom British Council Austria. So, uh, please welcome with a, we send you a, a round of applause. Um, thank you. And we listen to your information and thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. We are really, really happy to be here. So, my name is Virag Varga. I work at the British Council in Austria. I'm an exams coordinator and IELTS administrator, and this is my colleague, Megan. Yeah, hi, I'm Megan John. I'm an exams assistant at the British Council, and we're really excited to be here today to tell you all about studying in the UK. And this year, we're joined by Universities, in U Universities UK International and um, University of Warwick. So this is Anna Mai from UUKI and Delith Chambers from University of Warwick. So why should you study in the UK? Well, it opens up doors to a wide range of opportunities with world-leading universities and courses. So it's home to four of the world's top six universities and second in the world for university industry collaboration. Over half of University UK, over half of university research is classed as world-leading and um, there have been 107 Nobel Prize winners from the UK. In the UK, there are 109 universities and 133 colleges, so you're really spoilt for choice if you want to go to the UK. Okay, so the UK is a very, very friendly international community. It's always been and will be in the future as well. There are half a million international students from 200 countries studying in the UK at the moment. Uh, over 50% PhD students from outside the UK, which is a really, really high number. There is a diverse population and a multi-faith society, and there are always welfare and international student support officers who will look after you. So if you're feeling blue, don't worry. You can join any student communities. You will find lots of students coming from Germany, also from Austria, from all kinds of faith and religions as well. So the different types of degrees that you can do in the UK. Bachelor degrees are generally three years long, however they can be turned into a four-year degree if you wish to do a year abroad. This is then spent in a country of your choice, however it's best to make sure that the university you're studying has links to the university you want to go to. Um, master degrees are usually one year, however can take two years, and PhD, PhD courses generally take three years. So it can be quite tricky to decide which university you want to go to. As I mentioned earlier, there are over 100 universities in the UK. But to narrow down your choice, you could have a look at the website's topuniversity.com and the Times Higher Guardian and Telegraph University guides to see where the universities rank and the different courses that you can find. Um, it's also important to have a think where you want to go in the UK. Do you want to be up north or down south? And also think about costs. London is typically more expensive than in other parts of the UK. If you do wish to study in the UK at bachelor level, you need to look at the website UCAS. Here you can type in the course that you wish to study and it will show you all the universities in the UK that offer this course. You then do your application through this site, which my colleague Virag will talk about in a second. More information on studying in the UK, so more of the practical information, can be found on the website study-uk.britishcouncil.org. Here there are social media channels. First, um, so real-life student experiences are also posted on this website, along with practical, devices, um, practical advice, scholarship opportunities that you could maybe opt for, and also um, more in-country events to really see what's going on in the UK at the moment as a student. Um, so yeah, as I said, you can find out the different, um, uh, the different grants that you can get by looking at study-uk.britishcouncil.org. Um, Cost-wise, bachelors in the UK 
can cost up to £9,250 per year. However, in Scotland, it's free. So it's <laughs> worth thinking about that as well. OK, and now I'm taking over to tell you a little bit about UCAS. UCAS is a centralized website for all university applications in the UK. It's a little bit different system than what you have here in Austria. So in Austria, you usually register with the universities directly. However, in the UK, you're not contacting the universities themselves, but you submit your application through UCAS.com. We put here a couple of deadlines for the 2018 and 19 entry for you. So if you're interested in applying for some art and design courses, you still have time until the 24th of March to sub submit your application through UCAS. To UCAS, you will also have to upload all your documents, all your previous school certificates, language uh, proofs, and everything that would be required for the application. The general undergraduate 2018 entry deadline will be the 30th of June. So you still have some time if you're not looking into art and design courses. But it's very important that you complete your entry application and submit it to UCAS until the 31st of August. So it's not just enough to upload everything and complete your application, but you also have to go through the submitting process. Final deadline will be the 20th of September, so late applications will be available until the 20th of September, and clearing closes on the 23rd of October. Clearing is another thing that we don't have here in Austria, so if you don't get into the courses you, 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 would want, you wanted to get into, there are universities offering uh, places still available, could be completely another course, another uh, department, but maybe still interests to you, then during clearing you can still apply to these. Okay, so now, after all we've said, you decided to study uh, in the UK and, and go to the UK uh, for, uh, to, to get a degree from there, uh, we combined a couple of things that the uh, admissions team will have a look when reviewing your application. So we, we uh, pay attention here because it's a little bit different once again than the Austrian system and all depends on these things we are going to tell you now. So first of all, your qualifications are extremely important and a personal statement. As we know, you don't have to write this in Austria, but for the UK, yes. The content is very important of this personal statement. It should display really your passion for the subject area and demonstrate your motivation, enthusiasm, and the skills and experiences that will basically enable you to succeed at the university. You will also have to provide references, and the quality and the content of the references will be important for the admissions team and of course your knowledge and commitment to the subject discipline. The personal statement will be a sign of what's to come for tutors, so they will select you to the different courses based on what you have in your personal statement, and it's also reflecting your ability to articulate yourself fluently and accurately in writing. If you have a look at the studential.com link we have at the bottom, then you can find templates for very, very top ranking and good uh, personal statements. If you're submitting your application to UCAS, you will have to prove your English knowledge. There are entry requirements, English requirements, which will be followed by an IELTS test, which stands for International English Language Testing System. Last year, we had more than three million test takers, which we're really proud of, and it really opens doors for you. So it will enable you to study in any English-speaking countries or any English-speaking courses also in the EU. The other exam you could take is Cambridge English Assessment or Cambridge Assessment English, uh, which offers different level-based exams. And if you check with the university, it can also be recognized for your application. So, key websites. Yeah, so as I mentioned, study.uk.britishcouncil.org um, is important if you want to look at personal, um, in real life, um, advice from students in the UK. UCAS is definitely one to remember if you're planning to do a bachelor in the UK, as this is the website you need to apply through. And you can also have a look at UKCISA, which is the Council for International Student Affairs, and also NUS.org, which is the National Union of Students. 
Yeah, and if you would like to contact us, the British Council in Austria, we, we are located in Vienna. You can go to our website, britishcouncil.at, or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. If you have any inquiries or just general questions, then you can send an email to exams at britishcouncil.at. And now we are handing over to our colleagues from universities, UK International and the University of Warwick. And if you have any questions, of course, holler anytime and just ask straight away. But we will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Und wir gerne beantworten alle Fragen auch auf Deutsch. Thanks so much. Um, so I'm from Universities UK International, which is the umbrella organization for universities. And we do their international work. And Brexit is part of that. And yeah, like I already said, I'm, I'm sure you have questions. You can do that now, you can do it later. Um, there is a lot of uncertainty about Brexit, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to say a couple of things, uh, which we already can tell you, knowing that there are uncertainties. So first things first, while the UK is in the EU, nothing will change. So we're in the EU until March 2019, which will mean that EU students who want to study in the UK coming academic year, 2018-2019, can continue to do so under the same um, uh, fees and loan schemes as UK students do at the moment. So there's no change there. And that will not change for the duration of your whole course. So that will just stay that way for the whole years you're there. Then our organization is talking to the UK government to hopefully make sure that the UK government will extend that same rule to any students from the EU that want to study in the UK starting 2019, 2020. We don't have any you know, certainty about that yet, but the signals are positive and we're keeping our fingers crossed that that is, uh, that is going to be the case. After that, the future is, yeah, is a bit uncertain. It really depends on the negotiations and it depends on what kind of migration system the EU and the UK or the UK government will put in place after we leave. And what the UK, University UK is doing is that we're talking to our government saying that we want to continue to recruit EU students and staff uh, with minimal barriers and mineral extra requirements that we have at the moment. On Erasmus, I can tell you that for, the, for some of you who know, the current Erasmus program runs all the way up until the end of 2020. And we are in that program until the end. So actually nothing is changing. If you are you know, interested in doing an Erasmus period at, in the UK, within your studies, you're fine. We're in that program until the end. There's nothing changing there. So feel free to explore UK universities for your Erasmus period. Um, for the future, so like I said, we're in regular contact with the UK government. We're trying to get um, them, you know, we, we do know that we're, they're very much aware of what we would like to, ha to see happening. And we're very much lobbying to make sure that we, in four years, for example, when the new Erasmus program is up and running, EU students can still continue to come to the UK and study in the UK under very beneficial circumstances. Um, the, you know, the UK and the sector, the UK university sector will also always be very welcoming, uh, welcoming to international students and we're working to keep it that way so that, you know, un EU students will continue to feel welcome and you're an essential part of our, you know, student experience. So that's very important to us and that's what we want to keep it that way. So thank you. And I'm going to hand over to Delith. Thank you, Anna Mai. Thank you very much for coming to hear about studying in the UK. We're very pleased to hear that that's something that you're seriously considering, and I hope that you're getting lots of useful information this morning about how to go about that. So thank you to colleagues, British Council and Universities UK International for that. So that's me. I'm from the University of Warwick, but I'm actually, I'll tell you a little bit about my university in a minute, but I'm representing um, UK universities here. And the thing to say is that there really is something for everyone in the UK. And the first thing I would recommend to you is that you really need to think about what it is that you would like to study. And then use that as your starting point to research where you might do that. We have universities all over the UK, universities in rural situations, so in countryside, or big cities, or um, on a campus, or in a city centre, large institutions, small institutions. If you wanted to study art and design, there are art and design colleges, music conservatoires, veterinary colleges. 
as well as very large, comprehensive universities offering very wide range of, of subjects with facilities that support that. So don't just look at London. We, everybody knows about London, but there's a lot of UK outside of London, and I would really recommend looking very widely. So think about what really matters to you most. You've got your academic side of things, the subjects, what's the reputation of that course or that institution, what kind of research opportunities might you as an undergraduate um, have, what about the funding, study abroad opportunities and so on. And then the non-academic criteria I was mentioning before um, about location, what facilities are on the campus. Some campuses are the size of a small town. So, for instance, on our campus, we have a hairdresser, a pharmacy, banks, as well as eating and meeting places and a big arts center. So lots of different opportunities there. And the weather, we've got that up there. But actually, it seems to me that your weather is pretty similar in Austria to the UK at the moment. So briefly about the University of Warwick. We're one of the younger universities. So we were founded in 1965. But in a very short space of time, we've actually become one of the, the top institutions in the UK. So um, we rank amongst our peers, Oxford and Cambridge, UCL, very high reputation institutions. We have a very international community. And as Anna May said before, the UK really wants to have international campuses. EU students make up a significant proportion of the student body um, in the UK. I think it's about 5% overall. On my campus, it's near uh, 10 or 12%. Um, so we're very welcoming to you. We believe that students, even our British students who might not have a study abroad opportunity, if, will learn and have an international experience from their, their fellow students. So... Do your research. It'll take you a while, but I really recommend that, that you do your research. Think about what, what other opportunities you might have. Volunteering is a big thing in the UK. So if you're wanting to um, give something back to the local community at the same time as learning some skills, which might be helpful to you in the future, there are lots of opportunities to do that. And um, many courses will have employment opportunities and partnerships with industry. So don't be put off by what you're hearing in the, the press. We really do want our European partners in the future. So thanks very much. Do ask us questions or come and visit us on the stand and we're very happy to, to um, try and answer your questions. Also wer Fragen hat, ich fange sie ein. Möchte jemand Details wissen? So also if you have any questions about exams you will need to do. Please. Ich habe nur eine kurze Frage. Wenn, ähm, wenn jetzt jemand sagt, äh, ich möchte in Österreich studieren, mache einen Bachelor of Masters in Österreich, aber zum Beispiel gehe ich gerne für sechs Monate nach Großbritannien, UK, oder für zwölf Monate. Welche Möglichkeiten gibt es da? So, ja, es ist Danke. auch möglich, aber in diesem Fall wollen Sie ähm, darüber Erasmus denken. So, es, ist, es ist möglich, von Österreich äh, in, nach der UK äh, gehen und für sechs Monate oder zwölf Monate studieren, aber es ist äh, normalerweise mit Erasmus. Wer hat noch Fragen? Ja. Yeah. Uh, what kind of volunteer work is that what you're talking about? Is it like a uh, kind of a pair or <laughs> I don't know, just what kind of work you do? Every university will have its own program. Um, in my university, we have something called Warwick Volunteers Service and Many of the students will actually go into local schools and will help out in classrooms, hearing children read or helping them with their maths, or sometimes working um, in after-school clubs, um, children's homes, old people's homes. It's 
varies a great deal. Um, doing gardening in the community, that kind of thing. Uh, so very broad ranging of uh, broad range of opportunities, but every university will be offering something different. Thank you. Um, hi, I just wanted to ask, um, which level of English do you have to have for, like, is it different for... That really depends on the university itself, so it's best to look at the university you want to go to and they'll tell you which um, score you need. Okay, good, um, thank you. But usually from the IELTS test, uh, based on our experience, it can be from up to from 6.5 scores to 7.5, but always check with the university. Sometimes they also say that you would need to take a Cambridge exam which is level based and it doesn't work on the score system like the IELTS does. Okay, thank you. You'll also need to look at each individual course. Um, you'll find that there will be a variability within universities of what their entry, their English level entry requirements are. So, for example, with us, um, I think 6.5 will be sufficient for engineering, mathematics, such like. But if you want to do, for the IELTS exam, if you want to do law, it's 7 or 7.5. Um, what's the difference between this program and, say, a normal university? If you can even ask that. Is there a difference? Uh, which program do you mean exactly? This one we're talking about right now. Like I know, no, this is, this is all general information we were telling you about, so it's not a specific program. A specific pro program in this case would be Erasmus, Erasmus Plus, uh, with which you could go for half a, half a year or a year abroad. What the information we gave today was uh, general information about studying in the UK. Um, so if you want to go also for a full study program or if you just want to go and explore what other possibilities are. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can I just add something to um, something that our British Council colleagues uh, mentioned earlier? The Universities and Colleges Admissions Service, UCAS, provides lots of information about undergraduates courses, so bachelor degree courses. If you're interested in postgraduate, then you have to look at individual institution websites. There are some general um, information websites, such as um, prospects, but um, you actually really need to go and look at universities themselves and what they they have. Um, my question is, um, what does the living situation look like? So, do you live with a host family or at campus or? Um, that's really up to you. So, most generally, university students in the UK spend their first year in student halls, and then they, with a group of friends from their course or from their university or whoever, they find a house that they can live in and then they rent those out for a year or however long they wish to live there for. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask if there are any like entry exams for specific mm -hmm. um, uh, subjects or generally if it's like if you have to take a test for everything? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. Oops. We just remembered with my colleague Megan that we haven't mentioned the admissions tests, which is a requ entry requirement if you want to go to uh, University of Oxford or University of Cambridge. You'd have to sit an exam with the British Council, possibly in, in Vienna. We are organizing these exams usually on the 2nd of November. Uh, and it can be from mathematics to history to uh, literature, languages. Uh, so it depends on which course you want to take at the university. But we, we organize it normally for the University of Cambridge and University of Oxford. You will also find that there are other entrance tests. So some universities require a law test called the, the LNAT. Um, so you need to look at that. And medical schools, there are a couple of different tests that medical schools require. But again, you need to look at the individual courses and then find out the dates of, of those um, entry tests if those are the subjects you want. Um, 
Are there any questions? If you don't have any questions, you can also come find us at stand six A sixteen in Halladay. We'll be there until Sunday. And Universities UK International and the University of Warwick will be there until the end of today. So thank you. Thank you so much for coming and uh, representing uh, to how it works to study in the UK. Also es gibt Unterschiede in Großbritannien, aber wir hören, Sie möchten nach wie vor äh, Studierende aus Österreich und aus der EU auch haben, egal was jetzt passiert in Großbritannien. Es gibt Unterschiede, wie zum Beispiel, dass man eine Empfehlung braucht, wenn man sich äh, ähm, bewirbt für ein Studium. Auch Sie haben Anmeldefristen, was vielleicht der große Unterschied ist, Sie haben äh, Gebühren, also man muss Fees zahlen in ja in Großbritannien. Gibt es dazu finanzielle Unterstützungen? Ja, Sie können auf studentfinance.gov.uk schauen, was, welche Möglichkeiten es für Sie gibt. Sie können auch auf grants.at schauen, was Sie von der, der österreichischen Staat bekommen können. Wunderbar. Und äh, es ist garantiert eine, nicht nur eine Reise wert, sondern auch ein Studium in Großbritannien zu absolvieren, macht sich extrem gut dann im Lebenslauf. Ja, natürlich. <lacht> Vielen Dank an Sie vier. Großen Applaus und schön, dass Sie hier sind bei uns auf der Festung. Dankeschön. So, von UK, ähm, einem Studium in Großbritannien, werden wir dann weiter switchen und die FH Campus Wien wird sich vorstellen um 12.40 Uhr, äh, denn unser Thema lautet dann, äh, wir haben ja den Schwerpunkt dieses Jahr auf Green Jobs und Green Education, Green Smart, sicher und nachhaltig studieren am FH Campus in Wien, wie gesagt, um 12.40 Uhr und äh, wir haben es gehört, alle vom... Ähm, von British Council Austria ähm, und auch äh, von den Universitäten. Die Damen werden am, an, in der Halle D. An welchem Stand ist das noch einmal? A16. 16, ja. A16, äh, gerne Auskunft geben. Dankeschön noch einmal.